They both play with very young rosters. They see success, but those rosters don't have many multi-classers. They're very fixed in their ways, and they can't fit Gelu on his mage. Valet on the Shadow Priest. Now, these guys have found the perfect teams to be used, and they're going to start it right now in the Grand Arena. It's going to be the Milkman versus Team. Knobbers is back from retirement. Minpoike as well here as we begin the AWC program in 2019. It's a battle of the best here today. Gelu Baba already lining up some greater pyro blasts, and those can be quite devastating as he actually gets two off in a row. Looking for an early kill on Valet. Tons of damage connecting. Great crowd control by the Chalky Milkman early on as Valet is still now forced to trade Dispersion. That early assault banking them a powerful defensive cooldown from the Shadow Priest, and the chain on Minpoike continues. Yeah, Minpoike forced to trink it out as well as to use the Iron Bark on Valet. So a big victory there for Chalky Milkman in the opener, but that really falls back on these greater power blasts that Gelu was able to get off. Another one cast it out, but unfortunately gets cycloned up there um, by uh, Fnauber. So the damage does get avoided by Valet in the meantime. And Poike now into a Quaking Palm. Big burst damage onto Valet once again. He trinkets out of the Kidney Shot, trying to get out of the Smoke Bomb, but this is actually really scary for Valet. Still has the Void Shift, has to use it as well on the Fried Kidney. This is a horrible start for Team team. Yeah, I mean, this RMD, the rogue mage of Ashley and Gelu Baba is just decimating team team in game number one with amazing crowd control and tons of pressure. And we can see that when Gelu Baba has a team that can utilize him, he's a hard carrier to not be kind of kind of just washed away. He's going to be carrying his team here in game one and throughout the tournament, I do believe. We see some damage finally showing up for the team of team as Ashley dips fairly low on health and Poike caught into a blind. This is what the Chucky Milkman have set up for throughout this entire fight with everyone locked down in crowd control. Valet is all by his little lonesome trying to survive. Manages to secure crowd control on the entire enemy team, keeping himself afloat just a little bit longer, but Minpoike still can't connect the heal and Valet looks like he's ultimately going to be going down. Chucky Milkman execute precision in game one. If he was going to join XRB, obviously Looney, one of those other players who is in those top players, those top druids that you expect to see. Now we see Fnobbers finally finding a team of zone, and we're going to see exactly what Zico did mention here as Valet going to be taken down. Now, what do we... Uh, it's up to Team Team to kind of deflect that aggression in the start. We saw how fast that first game did go. Will Team be able to hold on? Will they have a stronger opener? We find out right now. Yeah, Gelu's going to be pushing in, putting a little pressure on Fried Kitty. Both mages just exchanging damage. But as a Frost Mage, you really don't want to mess with that greater power blast. So if Gelu can cast those out, it is likely Acro has to stop him. And that is what happens. Blind over on the Fnobbers. He trinkets out immediately, does not want to fall behind. And it looks like Team, they're getting aggressive early on. And Kitty shot now over onto Acro, but Ashley gets spam polymorph by Fried Kitty, and he manages to deny that situation. Yeah, we really haven't solidified which target is the optimal one. It does appear to be that Gelu Baba is the target for team, and Acro is the target for Chalky Milkman early on. Acro pre-activates Faint, expecting an incoming stun and trying to read the situation, but that stun no longer available. Fnobber's locked down in crowd control. This is dangerous for Gelu Baba. Great crowd control by Minpoike as well in team are doing a much better job here in game number two in terms of offense. Maledict connects. That's going to be absorbing a lot of healing. He needs to be careful as that cauterize will also be absorbed if he gets bursted down too heavily. Ray of Frost gets interrupted by Gelu, but I would say that team are in a much stronger position here in game two. Minpoike on fire with these Cyclones. Yeah, nice Cyclone on Gelu on that Iron Bar coming in from Fnobbers. It's going to make it more difficult for Fnobbers to actually top him off, but finally able to land some heals. Gelu going to be okay. Kidney shot over on Acro, but once again, gets denied by Min Poike. Like you said, Sid, Min Poike on fire so far in this matchup. He's completely controlling Ashley across the map with those triple cyclones and entangling roots. They drop the smoke bomb on Gelu Baba with no Gladiator's Medallion. He cannot escape that. Fnobbers goes for a Tranquility, which heals through it. Smart move. Gelu will easily survive. Ashley with Vendetta available. May swap to Min Poike. I would like to see that at some point with Combustion oh. and Vendetta. They can do an all-in kill on Min Poike, and with that balanced root affinity, he loses all the defense of the Guardian Druid, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the case as Fnobbers jumps in for crowd control, locking Min Poike out of the fight. No good, though follow-up with the Polymorph casted as well. And with no Trinket, Acro is in trouble. At very low health, the Maledict is soaking up a lot of healing. Minpoike is still locked down, and Acro is all alone. He's trying to get aggressive at the same point, but Minpoike just can't heal. Fnobbers locks him out with another into the third. Finally out of Cyclone. Minpoike's got a lot of work ahead of him. That Maledict dispelled off, but still dangerously low as Acro manages to escape 
into a Cyclone, and Fnobber's immediately responding to Minpoike's Cyclone pressure with Cyclones of his own. Minpoike crosses the map, gets clotheslined, though, by Gelu. Uh -oh. Great teamwork, and now Acro in a ton of trouble. Fried Giddy has nothing really available for him, and Acro will fall. Chalky Milkman takedown method black in the offline rounds. <laughs> you know, like, Car Carter's been in the back. He he's been on break for a while. You know, he's been waiting since BlizzCon. He thought up this one. Finally, he's going to be able to write it down. Congratulations to everyone in the back who finally Finally got to write down calcium buildup. Well, uh, what high rated games and Chalky Milkman, they've been able to execute. Also, neither of these druids are afraid to get aggressive. We saw in the previous series that the druids were playing ultra defensive, staying max range, not going for cyclones, but both Fnobbers and Minpoike were constantly looking for cyclones. And if you're an aggressive uh, player as a healer, that opens opportunities to get punished and go down. So, because they're playing so aggressive, these opportunities have opened. Yep, and I think the f mage in general is really strong against the Restoration Druid because of that Kleptomania talent. When you do land that crowd control, you can use Spell Steal with Kleptomania talent. It removes every single heal over time effect, and that <laughs> that's a great way to reduce some of the incoming healing a Resto Druid has available. Beautiful crowd control by the Chalky Milkman once again on match point. Their devastating assault is going to force dispersion and potentially even more valuable defensive cooldowns as the assault continues. Cyclone after Cyclone into Bash. Maledix connects. Valet in trouble. Minpoike overlaps defensives during this assault and finally team secures some crowd control and the Fnobbers try to launch an attack but Gello and Ashley are already immediately retreating away. Valet trying to hunt them down. Maledix flies in. Borsal's Vortex pulls Gello into line of sight. Well positioned by Minpoike as he carries the team here early on. They managed to pull at least Iron Bark by Fnobbers but in the meantime Blind has been committed as Ashley goes in for potentially the kill here towards Valet. They continue the chain with a sap. Fried Kitty gets cycloned up and Chuck Milkmen are just completely destroying this game at the moment. They need to try and get a void shift from Belay. They drop the smoke bomb to deny it, but they don't have the damage to back it up. Fried Kitty blinks in just in case, and pre-temporal shields the incoming void shift to survive the smoke bomb. That was amazing teamwork by Fried Kitty and Belay to survive, but that void shift is a five-minute cooldown. Unlikely to see it again with the intensity that Chalky Milkmen are bringing. Yeah, Gelu now just controlling up Belay. See, now that he's not getting targeted down, you control the Shadow Priest as much as possible, deny their go, and now once again, Chalky Milkman, they can look to get aggressive, but beautiful triple CC coming in from Team Cyclone on Fnobbers. Uh, Polymorph on Ashley and a bash over onto Gelu. Nicely done, but just not really able to find the damage so far in this matchup. Quaking Palm on him and Poike. Potential Ring of Frost. No, Gelu not able to find it. Now Poike can get a free Cyclone onto Gelu and uh, escape and keep his team alive. Yeah, that balance affinity play by Minpoike highlighted quite effectively here. Both these druids playing with Cyclone very well, but oh, in the meantime, Fnobbers opened up to school. He got counterspelled. Could be an opportunity for team to attack towards Gelu. No, Iron Bark connects. Gelu will restabilize, and looking at the cooldowns, Combustion is up shortly for Gelu. That's a big hit. They need to get a dispersion from Valet with that power punch. Gelu making his way over, but Fried Kitty's got Blizzard down. Gelu has to blink in. Minpoike's crowd control, triple crowd control here, set up by the team of Chalky Milkman. Can they get the chain? No. There's a gap in the crowd control. Minpoike, they connect the defense, but then they overlap it, and then they get the Polymorph off the back end of it. This could be devastating, potentially. Valet, once again, hard carries with triple crowd control, stalling out the kill just that little bit uh, longer, greater. but with Maledict and a greater Power Blast incoming, Valet's on the run. It's match point. Will they fall down to the lower bracket? Ashley commits crowd control to Minpoike. Greater Pyro Blast being channeled. Tons of damage. Valet dips low. Fnobbers keeps the chain going, and it's almost like Fnobbers never even left. Huge damage coming in. Valet barely staying alive. Yeah, blind on Minpoike. It is unfortunately diminishing return. Ashley looking for more crowd control. Manages to find the Garrote. No sap because it was DR with that Dragon's Breath or a Cyclone. Now Valet cycloned up low. Healing gets denied by Minpoike. If they can find any crowd control on Minpoike, Valet has nothing left in this situation. He has no void shift. Minpoike tops him off before any incoming crowd control. Nicely done. Team manages to stay alive for a little bit, but their offense just isn't that great. They can't find the damage they need. They're struggling to stay alive. Cyclone on Minpoike. Valet still in a lot in trouble using his vampiric embrace to try to get some healing but the greater pyroblast is going to get filet dangerously low but with the line of sight filet and Minpoike have good teamwork they managed to escape for now they pick tolveron arena the largest map in the pool to try and take advantage of having a frost mage and a shadow priest both ranged classes but gelu's greater pyroblast is a bigger threat than both of them can bring combined and because of that every time he gets a couple off it's a cooldown or potentially a kill here as filet gets cycloned at low health Minpoike moves into cyclone fnobbers but they can't 
can't get anything off the back end of this. There's a greater pyroblast being channeled. Gets line of sighted. Valet is going to have to hug this pillar for dear life if he wants to stay in this fight into dampening. But Chalky Milkman, their setups have been immaculate throughout. And I'm not sure how much longer he can really keep this up. Meteor connects and Poikate makes his way over. Manages to connect some heal over time effects to Valet as he starts to stabilize. Look at, let's look at Gladiator's medallions right here. Valet sets up crowd control with a stun. Good setup here by the team of team as Ashley doesn't have cooldowns for 14 more seconds. Whoa, whoa, it's whoa, tons whoa. of damage out of nowhere as they pull off a miracle. Ashley goes down and team stay in the series, bringing this trinket. And Ashley went for that DR blind onto Rimpoika. Fnobers actually cloned up delay. So if he cloned that uh, delay, let that DR uh, fall onto Rimpoika. They could have had a full blind sap there and there would have been enough. Happened in these offline games and seeing the teams that these guys did have to go against already on fire in this tournament, but here it looks like the Milkman may potentially have team's number. Team was able to grab a rebuttal in that last game. Will they be able to keep it going and extend it to game five, or will they be dropped down to the lower portion of the bracket? And hook point is the setting here for potentially the match point of the series. This is a map brought in with Battle for Azeroth. It's a close, quartered, quick combat map and quite easy to traverse. So you have to be very careful of target switching or healer rundowns. And Ashley positioned quite closely to Minpoike, but already in combat denying a sap. Ashley sprints over for a cheap shot so that Gelu can continue the chain of crowd control with all three members locked down on the side of team. Ville could be in a bit of trouble, but he crowd controls Ashley with that quaking palm into a mind control. Bit of a cheeky play by Valet, but it bought enough time that Minpoike is now no longer crowd controlled and easily survives. And this is the best start to a game that team has had in this series. Yeah, and now they get to get aggressive. Novers not in any crowd control though. Gelu trinkets out of that stun, wanting to remain aggressive and just to survive, looking for the greater power blast on Valet once again. But like you said, team, they had such a great start. Perfect positioning. Valet able to just crowd control Ashley with the uh, Pandaren racial Quaking Palm into a mind control that completely shut down their opener. Now Valet's in a situation where he still has every single defensive cooldown available to him. Secret weapon of the tournament is Pandas. Yep. Confirmed it here in this match. Pandaren racial quite effective at stopping damage and starting crowd control chains. But in the meantime, and Poike locked into Cyclone and Devastation across towards Valet. Fried Kitty locked down in Polymorph. Fnobbers walks into a double fear. He's trying to continue the chain with a bash, but Valet punishes. Good punish, but they still get the Polymorph off the back of it, and Valet's in trouble. He trades Gladiator's Medallion, but not the Void Shift. You typically see those paired together, which is now an opening to kill Valet. Moving forward, Vendetta available. If not, just right now, there's so much pressure right now. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Valet in trouble, and just to get around the corner and right back to Minpoike's arms with that Iron Bark should start to stabilize. Yeah, now Valet looking to get aggressive, and I want to see team, they need to push in, get crowd control on to Fnobbers, try to reverse the pressure as they are on the back foot. Gelu doesn't have a trinket, so that could be an opening for them as well. Ashley being much more patient, their defensive cooldowns has the Cloak of Shadows available if he needs it, and it uh, looks like he will be able to survive, and once again, Chalky Milkman, they're getting aggressive. Kidney shot onto Valet, greater power blast connects, but with no crowd control on Poike, he should be able to easily stabilize Valet. Now the Vendetta being thwarted away as we see team initiating an assault. Second quarter into Cyclone, Bash on Ashley, good cross crowd control. That's going to force Ashley's most precious defensive cooldown. A Gladiator's Medallion paired with Cloak of Shadows, which can immune all incoming damage from magic, which both Fried Kitty and Delay basically only do. So it is very important that Ashley holds on to that, but now that it's out of the way, he is a lot more vulnerable and going to have to be a lot more careful as we see him in stealth, hiding from his opponents and looking for an opportunity to safely strike. Yeah, and Gelo's still looking for those greater power blasts, but like you talked about, Sid, Valet, one of the ways he can counter that is with a mind control. If you simply cast something a little bit quicker, you can prevent the greater power blast like we just saw, but can backfire. If you get interrupted on that uh, mind control, then all of a sudden you can't use your fade, you can't use your dispersion, and you become very vulnerable. So you have to be very careful with that at a line of sight, but it is so far working out for them, shutting down Gelu. Ashley is literally just staying in stealth, now going for a blind attack from stealth, but not able to really get any damage with the blind, effectively wasting it here, unless they can manage a dispersion off the back end of this, but I, I don't believe so. And Ashley waited the better part of a minute to do basically nothing in that exchange, and now is exposed. 
Fnobbers backs him up, though, with Iron Bark and will stabilize him. Poike. They go for a swap to Minpoike. That bounce through Affinity makes the Druid a lot more vulnerable. Will Minpoike be able to handle the swap? Tri double Maledix, tons of damage. Triple, Triple Maledix, huge damage. Void Shift redirects the health back to Valet, allowing Minpoike to breathe and recover. Just do that once again. I, I really feel like Gelu can take advantage of the positioning on this map, get this damage out. Now Valet's in a little bit of trouble. Minpoike trying to play catch up with the Iron Bark, but I think he actually committed it on himself. No, it was on Valet. So Valet should ultimately survive here with the Vampiric Embrace as well. But Gelu, with the Greater Power Blast, he can just be free casting them, find these opportunities throughout the game. And Poike is still in crowd control. Nice Master Spell coming in from Valet to free him up. And now, once again, team, they need to find some sort of pressure. Disarm over onto Fenobbers. Is there any follow up? The Ring of Frost, nicely done by Valet and Frost Kitty, but no one really taking too much damage. Now, full cyclone secured by Minpoike. Gelu out of line of sight, just avoiding as much damage as possible. Bash coming in. Now, finally, Gelu's caught uh, uh, in the middle midfield, but Fry Kitty kind of ran out of damage there. Fenobbers is going to dispel off all of the Shadow Priest dots, and I think Gelu should be able to survive here with this Iron Bark and Safeguard. Yeah, Valet getting run down by Ashley with Vendetta activated. Ashley does a ton more damage, but not enough to even force Dispersion, which is typically the trade you see for that cooldown. Fortunately, though, that purple box below Ashley's health is now available as Cloak of Shadows, which allows Ashley to play a lot more aggressive, knowing that that safety net that is there to catch if he takes a ton of damage. And Poike caught in a Cyclone. Valet still getting pushed forward, but in the meantime, Valet starts an assault with that second core Ring of Frost, but even though they're getting power control, they're just simply don't have the damage to back it up. It's quite easy for the Chalky Milkmen to just retreat out of line of sight as Fried Kitty and Valet do not have enough lockdown to hold three members down in place long enough to get burst damage out. And Chalky Milkmen constantly abuse that, doing these hit and runs when they're on the back foot. And a couple greater Pyroblasts, three in a row being casted there by Gelo. Valet can't allow that. He's going to duck around the corner and deny any further. But if he opens himself up to a greater Pyroblast like that, it could easily be curtains if he's not careful. Yep, and there's no question about it. 5% dampening now, so it's going to become more and more difficult for these Restoration Druids. Kidney shot now on Minpoike. Barskin gets used as well. They make another swap onto him. He's getting lower. Safeguard comes in. Minpoike trying to escape, but he can't get rid of these uh, Maledicts coming in from Fnobbers. And Minpoike is getting low. They could take him down right here, right now, if Gelu has any more damage. Ashley has to be able to reconnect, but nice peels coming in from team, keeping Minpoike alive in this matchup. All right, Minpoike once again survives the swap, which can be devastating on hook point, so just close quartered map. It's difficult as a healer to have the range away from any incoming attacks or crowd control. In the meantime, team secure crowd control. They might be looking to put this to a game five as Ashley dips below about 50% health, but not enough damage to follow up any real threat. We do see Valet getting interrupted. Minpoike locked down in a Quaking Palm Ring of Frost. Good crowd control, but where's the damage? They need just a tiny bit more to take down Valet here with the kidney shot. They do manage to pull at least dispersion from him, which is now a defensive no longer available as dampening ramps up. Chalky Milkmen have the mana lead. They have the cooldown lead. They have the pressure lead, and it's looking more and more in their favor. Team need a miracle, although they did manage to pull one off the last game. It may be unlikely as so long as the Chalky Milkmen don't throw. Yep. Valet, he's going to be line of sighting, try to avoid damage. What Chalky Milkman need to do? They need to get the Iron Bark from Mpoike. There it is. They get the Iron Bark, but that's in Vendetta. Valet might just die through Iron Bark. Polymorph on Mpoike. There's really no way to get out of that. Valet barely surviving, trying to get in line of sight to Mpoike, trying to slow down the crowd control, pushing forward. Silence on Fnobbers. Now a blind on Mpoike. Valet really nothing, looking for the mind controls. Mpoike has to get out of crowd control. Nicely done by team to stay alive there. Valet almost taken down. He had to push into the enemy team to get his crowd control out to keep himself alive. All right, at this point, Minpoike is in a polymorph, and Valet does not have a lot of defense. Fortunately, he's far away from Gelu, and Gelu cannot get to him in that polymorph. Ashley unlikely to kill Valet by himself, so good defensive play by Fried Kitty, backing up Valet. Valet with good defensive positioning and playing a lot better than we've seen earlier in the series. The team of team has improved drastically throughout, but still, they're on match points. Even just one mistake could cost it, as they will be sent down to the lower bracket. In the meantime, Chalky Milkman initiating an assault, but Valet just playing ring around the Rosie on the pillar and Ashley simply can't catch him. Valet manages to keep it going just a bit longer. It's when Poike leaves crowd control, but there are the Maledicts absorbing incoming healing. And Poike does not want to use Dispel on that should Polymorph be devastating later on. But Valet's positioning at this pillar has denied so much from the Chalky Milkmen as they finally get an opportunity to attack Triple Psychic Scream.
Yeah, Gelu doing a good job, though, with that Dragon's Breath, denying any crowd control on Fnobbers out of that psychic horror the Shadow Priest has, and that's what Valet is able to set up Fried Kitty with. And Fnobbers in that Moonkin form, um, he's not going to be very susceptible to Polymorph, so the only CC that team is really able to get is the Psychic Horse done into a Ring of Frost. And if that gets denied, then all of a sudden Chalky Milk Band, they have free reign in the game to sort of do what they want. 25% dampening, the single target pressure on Valet is going to become very scary, but team is doing a good job so far avoiding that sort of damage and setup. So Ashley just sitting in stealth, playing very patiently, and then actually finding a sneak attack on Minpoike from stealth, and maybe Whoa! just killing him outright. He tries to jump to safety, but Ashley in hot pursuit with that Shadow Step, Maledix all in commitment. And Poike does not falter and manages to escape to safety without overlapping defensive cooldowns and still playing quite cheeky, looking for some Cyclones and a Malediction of his own towards Ashley. But now Cloak of Shadows is available and unlikely to find a kill unless Ashley throws it away here at low health to Cloak of Shadows. But they want to run down and Poike is too far away. They can't keep up the chase. Fnobber Stone, Crowd Control manages to connect Iron Bark to at least start to stabilize Ashley. Will it be enough is the question at 30% dampening. Valet in the meantime getting counter pressured. Quaking Palm crowd control by Gelu as this should secure a dispersion. Valet holding on to it. A bit of a greedy play here. He doesn't want to throw it away. Greater Pyro gets mind controlled right at the last second. Good denial, but the blind is still available. Valet in a three-on-one situation and has to trade that vital dispersion. But as dampening ramps up higher and higher and higher, it's going to become difficult for both teams to recover from burst moments. Yeah, Gelu had a really nice play there. Lands the Greater Pyro Blast onto Valet. Manages to interrupt the Polymorph from Fried Kitty, so he really can't assist. And then goes in with the Quaking Palm, followed up by a Polymorph, really turning the pressure in charge. Chalky Milkman's favor single-handedly. So a very nice play coming in from Gello in this matchup. Greater Pyroblast, Gello in the back line, gets one off. Ashley moving forward and following it with a kidney shot. Lots of damage, and Poike jumps over to try and save. Manages to bash up Ashley and deny the damage. Ashley does not want to trink it aggressively, so holding on to that. Ashley's been playing absolute perfect defense in this game, trying to play methodical into the deep dampening depths that we have achieved here at 36%. Fnobber still locked down crowd control. Ashley retreats away. Curious to see if maybe they can swap to Fnobbers. Gelo gains some greater pyros. No, gets psychic screamed on it by Valet. Valet constantly shutting down the enemy team, doing whatever he can to keep it going just that little bit longer and find some sort of opportunity. But Minpoike gets caught in the polymorph by Gelo, but Fried Kitty backs him up. No, he's Cyclone. Gelo gets out. Valet gets dropped with a smoke bomb. He's all alone. He only has Void Shift to his name to survive. He needs to be in line of sight to use it. Nobody's in line of sight. He needs to get over there as soon as possible. Swaps over to Fried Kitty. Ashley immediately ducks over and looks for a restyle, seeing that the kill is lost. Fried Kitty's low on health. Valet is low on health. There's 40% healing reduction in the game, and Minpoike has a lot of work ahead of him. Cyclone at low health denies any healing. Fnobbers gets Cyclone himself, and Gelu suddenly in trouble. Can they finally pull off the miracle here, Ven? I don't know. Gelu might be able to survive. Once again, another Maledict coming in. Fnobbers dispels it off, gets the Iron Bar. Gelu still has the Cauterize, the Cheek Death on that Fire Mage to fall back on. And now Gelu in a great position to land these Greater Power Blasts. Valet could be in a lot of trouble. Greater Power Blast number one at 42% dampening. These become very difficult to heal through. First damage once again coming in from Gelu and Ashley. Full blind on him. Poike is playing relentless. He has no way out. Valet does not want to wait too long to use that Dispersion. Uh, activates it with that Vampiric Embrace, keeping himself alive a little bit longer. Minpoike has the Iron Bark. Nice crowd control coming in from team. Can they reverse the pressure? Valet's still low. Gelu getting low as well. Caught into the silence with a disarmed Polymorph over onto Fnobbers. But Quaking Palm and Minpoike, Valet's in a lot of trouble. Both teams doing everything they can. As Dampening mounts up higher and higher, I don't think we're going to see a complete reset in health ever again at this point in the game. But Minpoike just simply doesn't have mana. Greater Pyro Blast is being channeled by Gelu for the kill. It's going to be secured. Valet falls in the Chalky Milkmen get a special delivery here on match points and stay in the upper bracket. But also we get to see, I think it's so different when you look at Baba's Boy Zico than what happened when we did get to this first tournament of the year last year, right? You hear Super T's going, it seems like